Hello everyone, my name is David TKI. Uh, I'm going to be bringing to you a short little uh, Quest for Glory EGA block for Retrothon, uh, starting with Quest for Glory 1, and this one is going to be a little bit different because this is actually a randomizer of the game, and joining me on commentary is the developer of the randomizer, Reynalt. Say hi. Hello everyone. <laughs> yeah, um, so let's go ahead and just take a look at our starting stats really quick because I actually have randomized starting stats so I don't know what I'm going to have access to just yet looks like throwing climbing and magic which is actually a pretty good selection of skills uh, stealth and pick locks are zero and I can no longer learn new skills so this is what I've got uh, I'll just go ahead and name myself David for this one you still get the 50 starting points to assign, and they can go in a number of places depending on what you want to do. Uh, but I prefer to stick all 50 into magic whenever I have magic available because it's usually agility is better most of the time. But if you ever need to train magic, then you really don't want to have to do that. So that's where I'm at. Uh, you ready to go? Yep, ready when you are. All right, so let's go ahead and start in three, two, one, go. So first of all, the top, some of the dialogue is going to be a little bit different, but in my inventory, I've started with only the armor, no weapons, no spells, no money, no food, nothing like that. Uh, I do, however, have two screens I can open up, uh, a tracker screen, which shows me all the accessible locations, as well as a journal screen that shows me what the shops are selling and how far I am along on each objective. Because in this randomizer, you have to do all three parts of the counter curse. Um, so since I start with nothing, I'm going to go ahead and see what these shops are selling. Let's see, Dazzle, Gold Ring, Mandrake Root. Not a whole lot of useful there. Uh, also, there's a few checks that have been added to various locations. Um, the Guildmaster is going to assign me to kill Soros Rex, which I really hope I don't have to do. Uh, I'm basically running with what we call the cursed seed option. Can you explain that for a bit? Yeah, yeah. So normally the logic for the randomizer uh, is is fairly balanced in terms of how it decides to distribute the items in the game. Uh, but the cursed seed uh, is is a gift that I give to uh, speedrunners and streamers. Whoa! Uh, who are the fox had fifty gold. Yeah, that's a that's a nice juicy drop there. Uh, the cursed seed um, basically tries to make uh, David's life just, just a little bit more painful because there are certain checks in the game or uh, certain routes that you could potentially take that are just really inconvenient, take a lot of time, take a lot of grinding. Uh, and the Curse Seed just makes sure that at least a couple of those are going to be required to beat this seed. So, for example, uh, David showed that at the very start of the game, you don't start with a weapon. And so that means that he, uh, uh, he can't really participate in combat right now until he finds a weapon. He's either going to need going to need to find the uh, the dagger or uh, the flame dart spell in order to be able to start killing any monsters uh, because a number of the monsters in the game uh, do have uh, drops associated with them for example the cheetah's claws or the troll's beard yeah usually finding some way to fight in combat is one of the earliest things that you really want to do uh, and ideally I get a weapon for that uh, which is going to be just the dagger, but I do have a flag set on that says flame dart counts as a weapon, and that's the main reason I stick 50 points into magic, is because if I end up getting flame dart as my access to a combat weapon, then I really want to have enough uh, mana to train that up quickly. Uh, I'm getting a I'm getting a lot of money starting off with. I, I just picked up a glowing key from the Meeps. That's one of my required items for saving the Baronet. Uh, you're going to yeah, see... Base... Yeah, go ahead. Yeah, yeah, in the base game, um, there are actually two keys, uh, and they're both identified as the large brass key. Um, but uh, because, uh, because in the randomizer, it's possible to get either the key to free the Baron's son uh, or the key to, to get into Fred's cave, uh, you can get them in either order. Uh, I separated them out into two different items. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so the glowing key allows you to free the bear. Uh, I've used a quick glitch there to uh, pass time quickly tonight, which is going to be how I train climbing on the town walls here. Just, just to get that little bit of climbing. Being able to climb in and out of town helps with a lot of things, but climbing is also useful in a couple of other places. 
Uh, there are a few things that I can do that are only available at night. Uh, night is still young. One of the thi flags that I did set is going to allow me to go into combat without a weapon. And that's important because there's a resting mechanic which allows me to rest any time my stamina is below half. So I just blow all my uh, stamina in combat. And then I can check the Mandrake route. And that is the one key which opens the door to the... Uh, to the uh, to Fred's cave. Yeah, the the back route to get uh, the back route to get into the the brigand fortress. Yeah, I also have gotten a couple of healing potions, which is important because an empty flask is required for a few of these checks. Uh, the fairy ring check requires an empty flask, and I get five vegetables. I think I'm gonna keep that because I saw the calm spell available in a shop somewhere. So vegetables are an item that are normally useless in the base game, but the randomizer did put in a, a possible check for the... Ooh, a magic potion. Okay, that's going to get me all the empty flasks that I need. Yeah, there are three drops in the game uh, that require the empty flask, uh, the fairy dust, uh, and the two water locations. The one at the Flying Falls and the one that's down at uh, Mirror Lake. Yeah, ooh, 10 Cheetar Claws. I can turn those into the healer and see if she gives me something. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah, the component, the component turn ins at the healer are, are also randomized. Yeah, I'll. No, I'll check the lakes first. Sip healing, and I'll. Okay, get rid of one healing potion and also the magic potion. Uh, five food rations. Okay, so now I don't need the calm spell. And then a glowing gem. That gets me access to Baba Yaga. Uh, mm -hmm. What am I going to do here? Um, I'll go ahead and free the Baronet, uh, just because I have food and a glowing key now. Mm -hmm. And that'll unlock a number of checks as well. Oops. It's possible to juke this ogre. Yep. Okay, feed bear, and then use the key. And so the kobold do, does have a few checks uh, in, in the, the back of the cave, uh, but because uh, David found the key um, elsewhere, he, he didn't need to, to come in here first. And with some quick movement, uh, doesn't even have to bother encountering the kobold. Yeah, I kind of did that real quick because I don't have a very good method of getting the key from the kobold, at least the, the vanilla way. Uh, but, but the kobold did have the fetch spell, which could be... Getting a lot of encounter bad luck here. Okay. Let's go to the healer and turn in the claws. Give claw. And 50 silver for that. Uh, so, I'm thinking of buying out most of this stuff. No, I'll leave that until later. But let's actually go ahead and do a safety save and check out what the healer is going to give me for the ring. Maybe it's something useful, and maybe it's something not useful. Yeah, the randomizer does ensure that uh, there not is, useful. Um, there's always going to be enough money available for you to get the items that you need to beat the seed um, without having to grind uh, fighting monsters, like fi uh, getting money from brigands or grinding the stables, for example. Um, but uh, it does not, uh, it doesn't ensure that you can't waste your money on a purchase that you don't need. So with a little bit of save, save scumming, you can check whether or not an item may potentially unlock something that you need versus not. All right, but what is the Baron going to give as a reward for rescuing his son? It's going to be a hand mirror. There we go. That's a required item. You can see the, the menu at the top. Instead of showing your score, it instead shows progress. Uh, there's a... In order to, to complete the counter curse, there's uh, all the individual things you need. Uh, for example, the food or comm spell, plus the glowing key to save the to free the Baron's son, the different uh, components for the dispel potion, and so on. Yeah, I went ahead and did a little bit of quick weapon master training because, as Reynald mentioned earlier, um, the the game does not require me to uh, to. Uh, well, I had a 10 extra silver because I worked at the stables twice, and so I could spare that money on the Weapon Master to train some of my stuff really quickly, just as a little help. 
Um, and then I went ahead and overheard the password for hide and go seek just in case I need it. Uh, but I'm not sure I'm at the point yet of actually going that way. Let's see. Oh, right. I've got food here. So let's see what check you have for me. Yeah, uh, six another, mushrooms. Another check that was added to the, to the randomizer. All right. Um, Seeing as how I have the fetch spell, I'm actually going to make use of Arana's piece here for a little bit because uh, there's still a couple of checks in the uh, Kobold Cave. So practice the fetch spell here, and that only gets me up to 19, but sleeping at Arana's piece always restores your mana to full. You need a fetch skill of 35 in order to fetch the key from the Kobold without waking it up. Just training that is a possible option. And then I've gotten six mushrooms. So the first one, five gold, 30 silver, and 50 silver. Uh, a lot of money. Yeah, a lot of money. Well, let's find out what that last set of mushrooms is. There's nine mushrooms total, three turn ins. And so the dry goods store has some of these mushrooms. So what am I going to get for turning this in? One gold. Not worth it. One money. All right, so load my save, but now I think that means I have more than enough money to buy everything else from the shops that I might possibly need. So let's see, that's going to be acorn here. That's one of the dispel potion ingredients. What have we got here? We've got the dust and the fur here, and then Zara's shop is going to have the mandrake root. Uh, I think I need to go to Baba Yaga and go ahead and turn in that mandrake root. But it is also entirely possible that my next check could be uh, something like, I haven't visited Erasmus yet, and I haven't checked the Dragon's Breath yet. But the reason I'm going to Baba Yaga is because with the Cursed Seed option on, there's pretty good odds that she gives me something for turning in the mandrake root. Uh, Mandrake Root is one of the potential Cursed Seed places because this cutscene is so long. And I do have a flag turned on that speeds up this cutscene, but even with the cutscene sped up, it's still pretty lengthy. Yeah, what is it? Normally it's a total of five minutes that you're spending uh, waiting for these cutscenes to finish uh, Ye without the flag set. Yeah, five minutes. And I think with the speed up, it becomes closer to like one or two. Yeah, that sounds about right. But I do have to pay attention here and actually say yes to every question. It occurs to me that I haven't safety saved in a while, so I uh, better do that. Might, might be a good idea, yeah. Yeah, this cutscene takes a while. But I do have all three components that Baba Yaga needs, which is the glowing gem to get in, the mandrake root for this section, which isn't necessarily required, because if I've used the Dispel Potion on Elsa and I have the mirror, then I would skip straight to the final encounter and never have to turn in the root, but I digress. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, it, it's one of the one of the the, the tensions around uh, turning in the Mandrake route to Baba Yaga is that you don't want to do it unless you have to, um, and so it, it's one of the checks that that uh, people who play the randomizer will often leave last. She has my dagger. There, there you go. She was holding the weapon. Would that count as a hidden weapon? Uh, hidden weapon uh, generally hides it behind multiple layers. I'd have to think about that. The Mandrake Root was in one of the shops, right? Yeah. Was it the healer shop where you bought it from? So yeah. that would not be a hidden weapon, though. Okay. Uh, I'd see a comment, Hut of Brown, I'll sit down. The, the game is <laughs> looking for two substrings, Hut of Brown and now sit down, and you can kind of combine those into one. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, so normally, uh, once you banish Baba Yaga, that's where the game would end, but not so in the randomizer. Yeah, the randomizer doesn't end until you've done every component of the counter curse, which interestingly does mean that you can end the randomizer by uh, freeing the baronet. Uh, but the weapon 
with the weapon now, I'm going to go ahead and start getting into combat. And you'll see me surviving a lot in combat. That's because inventory weight is currently locked to minus 500, which means I will always be in combat with the maximum amount of defense. So monsters only have the minimal chance to hit me, which I think is 20%, might be 5%. Uh, it's 5%. It's 20% in the, the later Quest for Glory games, but 5% in the first one. Okay, gotcha. Um, yeah, previously, runners were taking advantage of the Encumbrance Overflow glitch by picking up over a 1,000 rocks, and so that flag was added, added to the randomizer just as a convenience, so you don't have to bother doing that. There is also, by the way, if you think that's cheating, there is also a setting to disable the Encumbrance Overflow glitch if you'd rather do com combat the hard way. Yeah. I'm trying to think about how I'm going to handle the Cobalt, because there's still two checks in there. But actually, you know what? I think Brutus, I can fight fight him now. Sure, yeah. Yeah, and there's, there's some nice quality of stuff added to this randomizer. Brutus normally disappears the day after you see him, but, uh, but he'll hang around here forever in the randomizer. And so will the, uh, the Acorn, and so will the Fox, I believe. Yep, and... Uh... I think the ogre's body also disappears if you happen to not open the chest on his body. Flask of Undead Unguent. Normally you would use that to get the Mandrake root from the graveyard, but uh, I'm not doing that. I've already done that. Right, yeah, it's 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 possible to, to grab the root and leave before the ghosts get you. And uh, there is an exp expert mode flag in the randomizer um, that, uh, it kind of like in other randomizers where there are some uh, glitchy uh, uh, tactics you can use or things that require quick reflexes. Um, basically telling the logic of the randomizer, I can do these things, so it's okay if you hide a required item uh, such that the critical path requires me to leverage a glitch like that or, or grabbing the main group quick, quickly, juking the ogre, and so on. Yeah. Uh, I'm going to go ahead Not and wander the forest action. at night because the troll and the cheetah are out here and they have checks of their own. See, the beard here, which is an empty flask, so nothing oh. of use there. But there's also going to be a cheetah somewhere in the forest. I'll go ahead and kill this guy for practice and for money. Uh, the Good money that you can get off these guys is not in the logic, at least not with fair shot prices on. Uh, this screen right here has an encounter rate of 35, the highest outside of the three screens near the Brigand Fortress. Uh, encounter rate is doubled at night, so I have a 70% chance of an encounter here. And I, then I think it's one in six to hit a cheetar's, uh, cheetar encounter? One in four. One in four. Yeah, it's rolling a random number between zero and three, and you need to hit a three. Yeah, Cheetars have among the highest evasion in the game, so they're, they're, they're definitely one of the toughest fights. They also attack more rapidly than other monsters do, which means uh, their 5% hit chance goes further. Mm -hmm. All right. Four shot, getting that nat 20. Let's go ahead and nap here. Oh, I have the open spell now, which means I can check and see what's in here. Get the scroll. Two healing potions, and I forgot to train fetch before I went to sleep. Uh, how many healing potions do I have? Three? I might be able to just kill the kobold. Yeah, at this point. What's your weapon use at? Um, it's at 44. 44? Yeah, you should be able to do it. 51 strength. Ow. But I'm only feeling confident doing this because I have so many healing potions. Right. Yeah, enough lucky blast from the kobold can be uh, can make that fight pretty. Nice. <laughs> Business card. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So because uh, David did not roll uh, the, uh, the the skills he was assigned at the start of the run were randomized, and because he did not roll stealth or pick locks, he does not have access to the thieves guild. And so, the the thieves guild license is in the drop pool, uh, but it got renamed to an item that clearly indicates that you're not going to use that item. And so. The, the Thieves Toolkit is renamed to just a box of tools, and the Guild License is renamed to a business card. So one of the possible places that that required progression could be is behind Fred and Toro, but also at Swordy Lordy. I don't think I'm good enough to beat Swordy Lordy just yet, but the little bit of extra training here should get me strong enough to at least 
be able to take on Fred and Toro. Mm -hmm. And you have a lot of money, so uh, you can easily spend it here to train up your stats quickly. Also, my vitality is 67 now, so let's go ahead and get ourselves a nice drink. The Dragon's Breath, which is not Surely survivable not in the... Breath. Yeah, which is not survivable in the normal game, but in this randomizer, you can survive it with 60 plus stamina, and all I got for it was five silver. Um, uh, one potion of healing. Okay, that means I should be able to get to full health before I fight Fred, uh, which is important because Fred is very tough. He's tougher than normal trolls. In fact, all of his stats are like in the 80s line, so... And on top of that, you can't escape for the encounter to drink a health potion, so what, whatever you have going in is all you'll have for the entire fight. Yeah, this is usually the toughest fight that I have to deal with in any given run. But if you can survive Fred, you can usually su survive anything. Mm -hmm. Like, even Toro is usually easier than Fred. I also maybe should have considered going in the front entrance, because I would have gotten some extra training that way. Yeah, possibly. Looking like you're... Yep, you're fine. Good. I'm fine. Yep. Yeah, a couple unlucky bonks would be oh, enough to Oh, Miller do that. Light! Oh, no. <laughs> That's un literally undrinkable. <laughs> I'm not feeling confident taking on Toro with, uh, with uh, this uh, 21 health, so I'm actually sure. going to go ahead and rest until the next day. Uh, and there's an easy way to do that. Uh, anytime you go to the castle and you try to sleep outside the barracks, they'll throw you out at nighttime, which passes time very quickly, even faster than being thrown out of the tavern. And then you can nap yeah. here, and this restores all your stats to full. Yeah, time manipulation is a pretty big part of the randomizer if you want to complete it quickly. Um, if you need it to be nighttime, if you need it to be noon, past midnight, um, knowing how to set the time to whatever time you want it to be without having to sit there and wait is a really uh, valuable thing. There's another potential option that you could set in your flags, which is to allow yourself to rest whenever you want. Which I consider cheating, but yeah, I it's guess I'm who had the flag. It, it does make it a lot easier to set the time of day to whatever you need, as well as to up oh, weapon masters down. Yeah. And he had a troll beard, which that can also be turned into the healer uh, as another check. Give beard, one gold. Oh goodness! Is this starting to sound like a mage's maze seed? I'm beginning to think this is a mage's maze seed. Yeah, Mage's Maze is one of the painful checks uh, that the Cursed Seed option may choose to prioritize putting a critical item behind. But we'll see if Toro's got something. Well, even if Toro has something, I still require two items. So it may be that Toro has something, and I hope he does, because... Um, well, let's see, Mandrake Root is already pretty much required, so that's one of my potential curses, but... I'm really hoping I don't end up with the other cursed option, which is Soros Rex. Oh, yes, right, of course. Almost forgot about Flame that. Flame Dart Scroll. So, let's take a look. Dryad, Broggy, Healer, Rasmus, Wolfgang. Ow. Oh, yeah, you still haven't... Uh, the, the gold ring is in one of the shops. Uh, the gold ring has nothing useful. Oh, okay. You I've I, one. Yeah, I already checked it. What's my experience at? 464. So, my experience is 464 right now. Saurus Rex appears only when you have 1,000 plus, which is why I really don't want to see him. And I hope Erasmus has the trigger spell, because I don't have that yet. Because if Erasmus doesn't have it, then that means Saurus Rex probably has it. And... <laughs> Yeah, that's just the path that I really don't want to see. But also that means... Yeah, I, I, I did ask for a Cursed Seed, yeah. Alright, Erasmus 
has two checks here, one for beating him at Mage's Maze and one for just visiting him. And the first one for visiting him was just because people weren't visiting him otherwise, except when they had to do Mage's Maze. And he gave me a troll beard. Which is yet another check at the healer. <laughs> I, I hope this is one of the flower or the seed. It's the seed. All right, and the dryad might uh, give something for the seed as well. Is the flower the last item that you need? The flower is the last item that I need. Fingers crossed. But odds are good this is a trigger spell. Two healing. What am I missing? Oh. <laughs> Oh my goodness. That's odd. Uh, oh, Saurus Rex. All right, Q training montage. So now the question is, Does is Wolfgang going to give you the flowers or is Wolfgang going to give you uh, the trigger spell? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> that would be truly cursed. Yeah. Yep, I cursed myself. One of my checks is hidden behind Saurus Rex, and I'm pretty sure Saurus Rex is acquired. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so now it's a matter of getting his experience up to over a thousand so that the Saurus Rex is even encounterable. Um, and yeah, we're hoping it's that he's not going to then have to follow that up with Mage's Maze, which is kind of the, the wizard's mini game that you can play against Erasmus. Um, you need the fetch, open, and trigger spells, and the flame dart spell can also help if you happen to have it, which I believe uh, David does. Yeah, so I see a question in chat about the Antwerp population explosion. Usually no, but it's possible for Wolfgang to assign you to kill the Antwerp. Yeah, the, the list of monsters that Wolfgang may assign you to defeat um, includes all of the random encounters in the woods, uh, plus each of the unique enemies that you can also fight. Uh, and the Antwerp is, is also on that list. So there, there are going to be some seeds that will ask you to go do that. And that was kind of the motivation behind a number of the, uh, the drop locations that I added to the randomizer um, was just the kind of the community making note of things where, oh, it's... I kind of don't have a reason to go visit Erasmus. Um, and so I was just hunting around for different places in the game uh, that weren't being utilized by the randomizer, um, like talking to Abdullah as another example, um, and, and turning that into a drop location so that you have an excuse to go there. there Here's go. Rexy. All right, where am I going to go sleep? If I sleep on the town streets, I'll lose all my money, and I don't think I need money anymore, but... Yeah, you should be fine. But I'm just gonna... I don't, I don't want to be undone by my own hubris. Right. Yeah, the actually the the magic acorn drop from the dryad is another example where if you if she drops the acorn but you leave without picking it up, the game normally does not respawn it. Uh, and I've had situations where by Flowers. my own hubris. There we go. There Let's go mode. Uh, by my own hubris, I didn't bother picking it up and then later realized I needed it. Uh, so again, that's another example where the randomizer changes the logic so that the acorn is always there as long as you have not picked it up. But yep, that's all five components for the Dispel Potion. Um, and yeah, El Elsa usually is the last of the three quests that you end up completing just because uh, her quest is the one that has the most requirements. Yeah, so there's, there's two items hidden behind Elsa on her desk. And I very rarely see what those items actually are just because Elsa is almost always last. Not always, though. I've had a few cursed seeds where Baba Yaga was last, and even one where Barnard was last. It's really rare for Barnard to be last, um, but it definitely does happen. S similar to how it's really rare for a required item to be on Elsa's desk, but it does happen. Yeah, one neat thing that we found out is that if we throw the Dispel Potion, but then cast open to get movement in the cutscene. Uh, it does count as having dispelled her, so... Oh, and that's going to be time. That is time, yeah. Yeah, utilizing the same strategy that's used uh, for uh, speedruns of Quest for Glory 1, um, I, I decided to leave that in for the randomizer as well. 
It's a very neat trick because I was able to use it for the tool assisted speedrun to like grab the mirror off the desk before she uh, re returned to normal. That, that one is definitely really hard, if not impossible, for a human to execute. Uh, it's, it's a tough one. I think it is possible for a human to grab something and leave before she uh, transforms. Mm -hmm. Yeah, nicely done, David. Thank you so much. And yeah, thanks for joining me on commentary as well as developing this uh, randomizer. I have had so much fun playing this thing. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's definitely been an absolute pleasure for me to work on it uh, and to see it sort of breathe new life uh, into this game, to see the, the community really enjoy it. Um, I will, uh, I'll share a link in, assuming I can share a link in Twitch chat. I'll, I'll share a link to the randomizer if you enjoyed watching this and you would like to uh, play randomized Quest for Glory 1 yourself. Um, I will drop a link in Twitch chat, and uh, you can you can have your own go at this. And one really neat thing is that this is using Sierra's own patching system to make this work. So this will work in both DOSBox and ScumVM. Yep. Okay. Yeah, I just uh, dropped a link uh, into uh, Twitch chat. So please do check out the randomizer if you'd like it. Uh, I and I hope if you do that you have a good time with it.